Hey guys, Adrian here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my tips for Titan Anti-Control. So you may have actually won this module from the current event and kind of wondering, you know, should you upgrade it? Is it worth it? And what does it actually do? So if we take a look at the description here, it offers you uh, extra durability or health. It's actually slightly less than the uh, plated armor, but uh, if you take a look at the extra benefit, uh, it protects you against lockdown suppression and freeze effects. So definitely worth it. And you know, I highly recommend actually this uh, module or your Arthur or even the Minos, anything that actually moves fast, uh, you know, being able to uh, move around the map quickly without getting locked down or suppressed. Uh, highly recommend uh, this module. It can be placed on defense, um, you know, slot or the universal. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some gameplay uh, where you can actually see uh, this module at work. I wonder if this guy's going to jump. Uh oh, that was just a terrible idea. Terrible idea. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Okay, let's see if my uh, Minos flashes. So you see that? You see how it's flashing? This guy's trying to lock me down. Either lock me or suppress me. Trying to uh, melt up this hawk. So hopefully you guys can see why Titan Anti-Control is so effective on fast moving Titans like the Minos. And that's pretty much it. So thank you guys for watching my update 7.3 tip. Hey guys, you know who this is. And I'm back here with another tip for um, the update 7.3. It's not necessarily for the update 7.3, but bro to bro, I have two tips prepared. Here we go. Uh, first one up is diversify your active modules. The long phase shift has been dominating and I guess pairing that up with uh, full hardy quartermaster, it was everywhere. and. Now you see a lot of absorber shields everywhere and Orochis in stealth, um, sturdy titans that require huge amount of damage to take them down and various microchips that go bread and butter with repair module. Now there are just so many reasons uh, to build your slots by counterplay. Just a lot of things are out there. So it is important to diversify your active modules in your hangar and pair that up with the right weapons and bots. Okay, for example, Orochi and top tier microchips uh, would be impossible to go against if the enemy knows how to play. Um, and due to various abilities that basically come in all form of customization, you really need to be prepared for different types of counterplay and I thought these footages that was were kind of playing while I was talking uh, really demonstrated me uh, doing some a great example showing some great example of some counterplays so here's an Orochi trying to um, go all stealth go all over your teammates but then here we go counterplay like a boss and take him out and here, here I'm using healing modules just to save my last stand. So whenever I engage back to enemies, I still have that extra cushion of um, the last stand. And now Sharanga, uh, you might think, what the hell is this guy doing with this Sharanga against Orochis? But now the Titans don't have active modules. And of course, uh, you can still counterplay against these stealth Orochis by putting um, quantum sensor so if you don't have any um, if, you're, if you don't want to use any quantum radar consider using the quantum sensor so that you can counter still counterplay against stealth robots um, at least with your titan and it's just that a lot of people don't expect titans to have the quantum sensor and check this out I used my orbital strike at the last moment and I, I was able to kill that um, scorpion which brings to my second point um, my second tip is basically try to use get used to using these orbital strikes um, I guess it's it's already here and so yeah af after 7.3 update we have this new feature called Mod mothership and um, take advantage of everything on battlefield including uh, the orbital strike that's um, that you can use from the battlefield so now keep your eyes on the orbital strike gauge 
so that your awareness goes up so you get better at using these features you know sometimes enemy might get away with like a sliver of hp and you might be able to save the game by using this that was it for me thank you guys for tuning into my tip i hope it helped at least some of you commanders and i'll hand it over to the next mentor hey everyone i got here with a brief explanation on the new currency for the newly introduced future orbital support as most of you know this new feature arrived with the update 7.3 and it came with a new currency which can be called mothership components as of now they are very similar to robot and weapon components each ship has components specific to itself with 10,000 mantis components you can build a full mantis mothership with 10,000 monarch components you can build a full monarch each component is specific to their own mothership so for example you can't use mantis components on monarch or vice versa another thing worth of mentioning is the upgrade system for this new feature each mothership can be upgraded using their own specific components so with dreadnought components you can upgrade only the dreadnought ship with mantis components you can upgrade only mantis and so on upgrade system is similar to those of titans there are multiple layers that can be upgraded and no upgrade time that make you wait. That's briefly my explanation on the new orbital support currency. I hope it was helpful. Yo, this is Manny and my 7.3 tip for you is that you can finally with this update activate the high quality preset in the game and make the game look ultra smooth and, uh, you know, crisp and sharp. Of course, it will require you to download a 1.5 gigabyte extra patch. And also, depending on your device, the game might run slower or just as good as before, you know. Uh, so it's worth testing for you guys. If it runs a little bit too sluggish or slow for you, you can always go back to the performance preset and enjoy the game as you used to. Uh, but uh, I would suggest testing it and see if your device can handle it because this game looks awesome in that way. Hey everyone, this is Justice Victory. My WR tip for the 7.3 update is how to use the brand new Mantis Mothership in a effective and strategic manner. First one is timing. We're using an older bot to demonstrate. Soon we'll be attacked by three reds. We're gonna call upon Mantis at about 80% damage on the HP bar. We do have an F-type shield. When that subsides, the Aegis will protect. What's happening here is the Mantis extends life and gives additional opportunities to counter. In this case, we're going after a high value target, the Hawk, with its dangerous transform beam. Normally, this Hunchi would have been dead and useless a long time ago. Instead, we took out the Hawk and we're still going. And if we can get one more, that is truly incredible, especially for an older dash bot. Once again, thanks to the Mantis. And we only activated one time and it's making a big difference. Transitioning to Titans, Minos or Ox Minos has a reflector shield. When that reflector ends, many times Minos is in trouble, either taking too much damage or being destroyed. In this case, it's a double shield Minos. We can call upon the Aegis from the Mantis. We got that protection, we have healing. It does something else. It gives another opportunity, thanks to the mechanics timing, to activate the reflector once more and the charge once more to get through even durable shields like Arthur has. Other opportunities created, cap more beacons in domination or beacon rush that makes a big difference and get those extra kills, extra damage, extra silver. Again, opportunities that would not have existed without the protection to call upon from Mantis. Also location matters on a map. Again, all factors considered. So on the valley map, for example, this is a great location to be on if you have Fafnir. You can utilize that speed and look at the HP level. We're ranging back and forth between 10% HP maybe to 2% HP and it's the Mantis Aegis that's going to keep us alive to get a couple more kills. Very high potential with what you can do with the Mantis protection. Okay, so while we watch this, quick recap. We're using this in a strategic and effective manner. So the timing, we're considering the bot build. Does the bot have an energy shield, a physical shield? Is it fast, is it slow? And then location, all those factors, utilize them all together, they all matter. And over time, you'll build your skill up as to when to activate and how to utilize that shield best. All right, wishing you the best out there. Justice out.
What's up everyone, Danny Lightning here from the Lightning WR YouTube channel. I got some game tips for you guys. We're going to do uh, a couple little tips here and then we're going to talk about what weapons you should be using for things like Team Deathmatch and Beacon Mode. So first off, just in general, it doesn't matter which game mode you're on, strength in numbers is huge. Alright, find some teammates, follow them around. If you can travel in packs of three or four, you're going to walk through and just demolish people, all right? If you go off by yourself, the enemy team is probably going to be like, hey, there's a guy over there all by himself. Let's get him. The next thing you know, three or four robots just rush you and take you out. You don't want that to happen. So find some teammates and stick with them, guys. Strength in numbers is good, especially if your hangar is a little bit lower level and not up to par for the league you're in or something. So strength in numbers is huge. Now, let's talk about weapon choices for the different game modes. All right, Team Deathmatch. I love to have mid-range, five to 600 meter weapons on at least three of my bots, maybe four of my bots. Now, I like to have one or two robots with the up-close brawling weapons for Team Deathmatch, but for the most part, having a five or 600 meter range is a big help for Team Deathmatch. That way you can do damage from afar. You don't have to get close. It's really nice. Now, on Beacon Modes, I like to have maybe one or two robots with the mid-range weapons. Everything else, I got the 350 meter or closer weapons. Those seem to do the most damage. Those are the brawling weapons, right? You get those really high damage 350 meter weapons, 300 meter, 200 meter weapons out there. You will do huge damage to the enemies, guys. Plus, you're out there trying to defend beacons and stuff. So you want fast reload times and big quick damage. Those are the kind of weapons I go for when I'm playing these types of games. So, Also, I don't really think snipers are that great for beacon modes, okay? I wouldn't run snipers in beacon modes, like your Jaeger or something like that. Jaeger is a great team deathmatch guy when you can stay, stay way in the back, but I'm not into that type of thing for beacon modes. I want durable, close-up, high damage, all right? Remember, don't forget to get those beacons because most of the time, getting the beacons is what wins the beacon matches if you don't want to get the beacons play the team deathmatch all right that's where you can do all the fighting without having to worry about the beacons and i think that pretty much wraps this one up guys you have a great day and thanks for watching see ya